Two advocacy groups represented by the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights and Economic Justice are calling for a new investigation of hiring on the Boston Police and Fire Departments. The Boston Society of Vulcans and the Mass Association of Minority Law Enforcement Officers say the residency requirements being unfairly circumvented to the advantage of white veterans. To explain this is the staff attorney with the Lawyers Committee, Sophia Hall. Uh, thank you very much for being with us, Sophia. Hi, Chris. Thanks for having me. Uh, one of the things that's really driving this inquiry or request for inquiry is uh, one of the people who was a candidate for a job in one of these departments. Uh, talk about that. Yeah, Chris. So at the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights, we have been promoting this notion of closing any loophole that may have the effect of diminishing or, or um, downsizing the possibility of diversity in our public safety agencies. So here on behalf of two community groups, uh, Manlio and the Vulcans, and a host of community members, we now have questions regarding the way that the residency preference works, in particular in ways in which it may harm veterans of color that are, are Boston natives. Now, the residency requirement uh, normally is supposed to be you've got to live in the city for at least one year before you get on the fire or the police department. Uh, so isn't that being enforced? Well, so the problem here is the Part B of the residency requirement, which would be an individual who did not live in Boston before going into the military, and then upon leaving the military indicates on a form that they intend to return to Boston, those individuals, it appears, are not being held to the one-year residency requirement that all other individuals are. And so without that, what we're doing is we're diluting the pool of veterans of color, seeing as Boston is a more diverse area than Massachusetts as a whole. Uh, and we're improperly allowing people, unfairly allowing people, to go higher on the list than they should. Do you actually know at this point whether somebody um, got on the police or fire department without actually living in the city before that happened? Well, what we know for certain is that, unfortunately, the hiring process for the fire department and the police department has a lot of problems. You know, this is not the first time we've had a discussion about employment practices. We've seen the civil service take on an investigation of the bypass procedure, for example. We have filed multiple lawsuits that claim that certain employment practices are discriminatory and have been successful in those lawsuits. So what we're doing now is questioning this particular practice to ensure that this is lawful and that it's not going to hurt veterans of color. Now, there was one veteran of color that, that you're concerned about in this request. Uh, tell me about him and his attempts to get on one of these departments. Certainly. So Mr. Doyle was kind enough to allow us to quote him, but he is not the only individual that we've spoken to. We've spoken to a host of community members who similarly have taken this test two to six times and for their whole career have never actually had an opportunity to move forward and pursue their dream of being a public safety agent. Now, what about uh, the things, that we, the way they stand right now in the police and fire departments? Uh, how do they stack up as far as diversity in Boston? Oh, my gosh. Uh, our fire department in the city of Boston is one of the least diverse public safety agencies there is. And our police department is close behind. I mean, this is a conversation that we've now been having for at least four years. Um, and unfortunately, despite the fact that Mayor Walsh has been re-elected, we have not yet seen the successes that we would hope in moving forward with some of these recommendations that we've made that can improve diversity. This is BNN News. We're talking with Sophia Hall from the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights and Economic Justice. Sophia, I do remember there, there was a time when these departments did become more diverse, but under a federal court order, and that order was later more or less shut down, and I guess a lot of the people who were hired, uh, well, they're retiring, right? Exactly, Chris. So what you're referring to is the consent decree, which is a court remedy that allows for there to be more representation in particular agencies. Here we're talking about the fire department and the police department. The consent decree is no longer um, in force, and thus they don't have to maintain those records or those uh, minimums as they were required by law. You're right, though. Now what we're seeing is uh, a loss on both ends. We're seeing individuals who are retiring. We're seeing individuals in the middle who may be losing their positions because of discriminatory discipline practices. And then we're seeing individuals who are not getting in at the bottom of that line just because they can't either make it up high enough on the list or because of some unlawful practices in the bypass procedure. By the way, uh, the city says that there have been more recent gains in diversity in the police department. They have a cadet program that has mostly people of color in it. Uh, couldn't that really offset a lot of the problem that you're talking about with the, the hiring of veterans? Unfortunately, what the Lawyers Committee has seen day in and day out in the community is that that's simply not enough. And we're asking for the city to do more. Uh, talk about the discipline issues, because one of the things that you've already been litigating over for quite a while is the hair, trust, uh, excuse me, the hair test 
for drug use. Uh, explain that case a little bit. Certainly. So that case is going to trial next week. That is a case regarding the scientifically inaccurate and the discriminatory practice of how we test drugs. They utilize a hair test that has takes in both environmental influences as well as what someone might consume. And because people of color have a type of hair which is more likely to take in environmental proponents, particles, they are finding that they are finding false positives in people of color at a much higher rate than non-minority candidates or non-minority uh, employees. And so we have been litigating that case for some time because there is an alternative that the city can use that will not have the same sort of discriminatory impact. And we really demand that they do that so that it is a fair process. Of course, if you combine that with uh, the issues of the promotional exams and this new hiring, uh, Put that all together, how, how does that change the chemistry of these departments? I mean, to be frank, it feels like at the Lawyers Committee what we're seeing is that we have to plug the holes everywhere. You know, we have a system or we have a department that is lacking in diversity so significantly that it's not matching the community that it serves. And we have seen the consequences of what it means to work for a community of color that doesn't see itself reflected back in emergency situations, in the people that are supposed to be their, their protectors. And so here, what we're doing is, at the Lawyers Committee, we're making sure that we put the city on notice that they have flaws in their system, not only with the residency requirements, not only with the bypass process, not only with the way that they do drug tests and they apply discipline, but while well, after putting them on notice, when no action is taken, we are going to follow through with legal action to ensure that the courts note that those are unlawful practices that need to be addressed. Thank you very much for being with us. Thank you. Sophia Hall from the Lawyers Committee for Civil Rights and Economic Justice. In a moment, a festival for audiences and performers of color in Boston will tell you about a fundraising campaign by the Boston Art and Music Soul Fest.